Hi and welcome to the quick start guide for thick stroke. So first of all I've got a solid with some masks here. It's going to inherit your first mask automatically and we can see at its default we've got a variable width stroke and also a gradient along there. We'll just go through the parameters uh, but leaving this one till last. So currently um, we're using start and end where we control the start and end width of the mask or the stroke. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then we have a multiplier for the both of them, which sort of multiplies the two. The other mode is vertex feather, and that sort of has to do with force path open. So we'll talk about that at the end. Our style, we've got round cap or butt cap with interpolation. This will be a bit more obvious if I make this really fat. Um, so currently we're just doing a linear interpolation between the start width and the end width. And if we choose that as smooth, you'll notice, ah, okay. It's kind of hard to explain, but you can sort of understand what it does just by looking at it. Then down to color, currently we're using a gradient two. You can just use a solid fill if you like. We've also got gradient three. You can actually cycle through these colors. This loops pretty well. Uh, and also we have loop colors ticked. If you don't have loop colors ticked, then essentially as you cycle through the colors, then, you know, this one remains white and then the gradient just cycles. We also have a shift color feature. So if you say so you're a gradient four, you wanna shift the colors around, you can do that, it's pretty handy. Um, and this draw order here is gonna be obvious if I set this to really fat. So you can see that the start here, you can see that the black is taking over the white. So if we reverse the draw order, then that's just gonna be the opposite of that. That's sort of a bit of a niche setting, but comes in handy. Then trim paths, so trim paths, just as you would expect. Notice that the color isn't moving though. So we can set, the color and the width isn't moving. We just got, uh, we're just trimming it and it's just disappearing. However, what you can do is influence the width and color. So now when you start trimming, the start and, start width and color are now being moved with the trim. So that, um, creates an interesting effect. You can also um, offset this. You can loop it around, which is pretty cool. And you can also choose, you can customize this. Oh, I only want the width, not the color, or just the color. Uh, we also have quality settings here. So this is better to explain if I'm using this mask here. If we were using a butt cap and I'll just set this back to solid. Uh, we can see that if the edge is very sharp, if it's smooth, it's fine, but if the edge is sharp, this is a very tight corner, we don't have enough geometry here. And so increasing this can help you with that. Although if the edge is very sharp, no amount of geometry is going to be able to fix that. The only issue is, the, and an issue with increasing geometry, which I would only recommend doing if you have these gaps, is the more that you increase the geometry, the crunchier the edges become. And so at its default, we have FXAA, which is sort of smoothing the edges at about 50%. You can increase that to make it a bit smoother. It's gonna make it a bit softer. So at 100% view, it looks nice. Of course, if you're zooming in, you'll see oh, it's a bit jaggy. But yeah, the more subdivisions you have, the more jagged that's gonna get. So I would keep that at one unless you need, unless you really need to change it. So the other mode we have, instead of start and end, is vertex feather. And I'm using this uh, mask here in the middle just to demonstrate this. You're actually not allowed to use vertex feather unless the path is closed. So I can't use, I can't add vertex feathers to this. That's just an After Effects limitation. What I can do is just kind of hack that and close the path even though I don't want the path to be closed. And then I can force the path open and now I can start drawing vertex feathers. So that's just a roundabout way to access this feature. And now the width is controlled by the vertex feather and I can add as many or as few vertex feather points as I want. Um, you'll notice that if you're sculpting lots of different points, the width interpolation here is sort of more, more important. Um, that influences it a lot more. I guess the problem with the vertex feather is they can't be animated um, once you set them they're stuck. You can animate the width multiplier <laughs> and create a condom looking thing, but um, yeah, unfortunately they can't be individually animated. 
So that is just about it for thick stroke. Um, hope you create some weird and wonderful stuff using this plugin because I know I have.